Well, hello guys and girls. I am quite happy to say that I finally got this Arduino script thing figured out. A um, couple more days on it, and uh, thankfully I've got it doing what I want it to do. Uh, basically, I found that uh, on the actual script, let's just have a quick look here. You need to put, uh, well, first of all, I figured out how to make the uh, counter work. <laughs> And then I had a bit of an issue where it kept going through everything. Then I found out that what uh, re the word return does. So, yeah, it's probably not the right way of doing it, but it works. And in the end, that's all that matters. Right, so now if we actually use this thing, these are LEDs that uh, represent audio outputs. So, one of them is going to be access denied. One of them is going to be access denied one attempt to left and the other one's going to be access denied uh, keypad locked for whatever amount of time which I've not put in the script yet but I will do it at some point in time but I can do that easy ah <sighs> right on these LEDs here we've got um, uh, the middle LED is the busy light so to speak that uh, when you, no matter what code you put in, it lights that one up first and then it'll either flick to a correct code or an incorrect code. I can't remember which way I've got it around now. Let me just have a look. Alright, that's incorrect code. So you probably just saw one of those light up there. Which would be the middle one? Yep. That's access denied, one attempt left. And access denied, keypad locked out. Uh, but let's say if I was to put the right code in on this keypad, it's code, it's just number zero because whatever <laughs> testing purposes so zero and then enter and it'll flick to this LED which has not been given an output yet but I can soon you know add it as a digital pinout and then run it through a relay to say pop locks uh, to unlock and then I could do say another one quick key or something to make it so it locks the keypad. Now this is all well and good. Uh, I've got it doing what I want it to do, but you'll notice I've got a little Arduino Uno there. And it's got some crazy hackery going off here. And these cables go around here to this, into... what the hell's this? It's got the, uh, the old PlayStation symbol on it. Well, it goes into an RF an RCA to RF converter and then it kind of goes into a TV now yes I know you can get some pretty cool stuff on here so I have decided to uh, pretty much try to make a fallout terminal now this thing as you can see it looks a little bit like a pit boy okay it's a bit big for a pit boy but it looks like one well I thought well it's a bit big so how about I mount it into a vehicle a car now I don't know if you guys follow my uh, other videos or whatnot but I am in the process of trying to make a 80s car a bit of a project fallout so that's what this is going to be turned into and if I turn the screen on here's something you don't see anymore guys and girls black and white tubes warming up you'll see on the screen it says welcome to Robco Industries term link security door control password accepted which is the screen you get greeted with when you first well when, when you first hack uh, do a successful password hack on the Fallout 4 terminals if you've not seen it yet ah, now the fun part's going to be incorporating the two scripts together, or codes, whatever you want to call it, onto the one Arduino. I've got more than enough outputs on this Mega to stick this little nice 12 volt television. I could stick that in the car, uh, put a sensor on the keypad so as soon as you push a button on the keypad, it could flick a relay, turn the TV on. Uh, and then it could like this could be put in a window or something under the car 
or made to display into a window or whatever and yeah before anybody asks the same system could also be put onto a um, a TFT screen or LCD screen uh, liquid crystal display yeah, whatever as long as it was high enough resolution I guess uh, obviously you couldn't have sort of a dot matrix display it probably would work on a dot matrix display but you would need an RCA input which is the uh, the yellow jack plug you see the yellow plug on the uh, on the older Raspberry Pis uh, which I've not got into yet but I would like to um, just a bit of wiring advice on these if you're going to use one of these old PlayStation um, uh, RF adapters is that uh, they very very not say naughtily but it ma they made it so that you couldn't just plug an RCA into that because the we'll call it positive and negative although it's not technically true but we'll call it positive and negative you've got the inner pin positive and the outer screen or pin negative now <laughs> on this the positive pin of this goes to the negative pin on this one up here yeah. and then vice versa that pin there goes to the negatives of this one here so they cross it over hence the reason why it's all mixed up um, basically you've got one for audio and one for sound it's only a mono rule it only produces mono uh, the PlayStation obviously was capable of producing stereo it used to have the three ports on the back Obviously, the uh, the yellow ports, the white ports for audio, and the red ports for audio, which was left and right speakers. Um, it's going back some years, because it's been a while since I've had a PlayStation One. This thing's probably worth some money, actually. <laughs> At least if I can, I can uh, unsolder the uh, wires if I so have to. I've not done anything like cut the plug off it. In fact, on the back, it just plugs literally into the original aerial socket and it is it says channel 36 on there and it's pretty much knob on it's probably a little bit off but this disc, this dial may be off a little bit <laughs> whatever it's cool anyway I have sort of hacked this TV a little bit that uh, there now is actually power for a small LED um, because obviously on the on the pip boy in Fallout 4, there, just there, is a little LED. And I was going to put an LED just there as well. In fact, I've got one for it in a box somewhere. My room's a tip, but I've got it in that box there of aeroplane um, lights and things. So that's what we're going to use for that. Like I say, if I can uh, sort of make it, so <clears throat> when I do the wrong input I could well I could have this although it's always on the password input screen and then I could say you know with a load of characters on the screen as, as the fallout lock screen has um, you know on their terminal where you find the password by uh, selecting the mouse pointer if I could integrate a keyboard onto this it would be very nice if I could sort of make it so I could navigate using arrow keys and then just having a simple button to enter with. Um, this is a long way in advanced and I don't know if I could build this or not but it would be great if I could. And it would be nice to have it on screen so you've got all your different uh, passwords and mixed with random characters. Um, but obviously you just have it as that. Uh, and then instead of having that you could just have say uh, a pin number because obviously I'm dealing with pins here um, although I couldn't see how it would be so difficult as to put a keyboard input onto that and then actually have a password rather than a pass number I'll have to look into it but um, for now this does seem quite cool uh, and then obviously I could do it all on screen so that when it uh, you put your pin number in and hit enter it could either say you know access denied and take away one of the little squares until you you know you're out of squares and it locks out the thing on a timer 
uh, or if the password was you know cor uh, correct, it could you know do the scrolling of the text as it comes across the screen, and then you know you get the option to click on this one, which would already already be highlighted. So you press enter again now, and you could have the next screen come up saying you know maglocks open. You know uh, I can't remember what it says now. Connecting to maglocks is it or something like that? Uh, and you know, and then saying security door busy. I think it is. Whatever. I'm not sure. I can't remember now. I'm really tired, and it is almost three o'clock in the morning a.m. <laughs> yeah, but. It's just a little idea. Maybe I can do this, maybe not. It'll be nice. Anyway, I'm happy I've got the keypad sorted out and it all works as good as I want. Um, next job, like I say, is to integrate instead of using two Arduinos to port it all onto one and then have the input of this control what happens on the screen. It's a uh, Hey, for someone who's never done any kind of coding before, I think I'm doing pretty damn good here. <laughs> I mean, I never even knew what Enter did, so <laughs> there you go. And that was literally, f well, uh, that was probably 20 minutes ago. I never knew what Enter did, so yeah. There you go. Alright guys, and girls, that's me talking for long enough. I'm sorry about how long I talk for. And I'm sorry I sound a little bit... That's because I'm just so tired. <laughs> So, thank you very much for watching guys and girls, and I will catch you in the next video. I like when you do this. Just set the hold off a little bit, so it flickers. It's very hard to do on this TV. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching guys and girls. Peace out.